guys welcome to water baby tarot this is an energy shift reading for mars going into sagittarius mars went into sag yesterday january 3rd in tropic uh, mars will be in sag until february 16th i believe again all in tropic now there's pros and cons to mars going into sagittarius at this time a lot of you already know we've been talking a lot about this death process that masculine energies will be going through already started really um and when i say masculine energies i mean that affecting everyone on the collective level okay we all have masculine and feminine energies some of us are more dominant in our feminine energies. some of us are more dominant in our masculine energies all of us are in a different place <clears throat> excuse me regarding where our energies are at and as far as what healing needs to transpire and as um and as far as uh, integration is concerned we're all in a different space okay january is going to be the peak of the death portion of the death process february and march we're going to see a lot of the rebirthing energies and i feel like come may we're going to see a lot of abundance for a lot of people. Now, it's energy that's affecting the collective, but we all work through it differently. Some of us are working through the death phase, the death portion of the death process, much faster than others, some a lot slower than others, depending on how much work needs to be done. I will be doing a video on shadow work because it's going to be key to integrating these energies to getting through this process relatively smoothly, okay? It's a good thing. It's a beneficial thing. And, you know, it's not something to be feared. It's not something to be feared. Um, but like I said, January is going to be the peak of the darker energies of the actual death part of the death rebirthing process. Okay. Now with Mars going into Sag, um, the pros and cons of that. The pro is that you're actually going to be what most people will be um, way more amenable to change. Okay. Because Mars is coming from Scorpio. <laughs> A fixed sign, a sign that even though it is a sign of change, it's also a sign of focus, okay? It's also a sign of being hyper-focused as well as driven, but having that hyper-focus is not going to be as beneficial because it, it helps people get fixated, okay? And this is not a time to be super fixated. Um, focus on ourselves, sure, but if you get fixated on the things that you're trying to change, sometimes that prevents you from actually changing and transforming right even though scorpio is a sign of change and transformation but with sag um sag is a mutable sign and so sagis deal with change real easy they change on a dime you know just like gemini's their natural counterpart so that is actually going to be helping us a lot through the peak of the death energy of the death process okay um where it might come into a little bit of um What's the word I'm looking for? Don't have all my words yet today. I feel great, but I don't have all my words back yet. Um, as far as it being a con, it's it's almost like too, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not very tame. <laughs> it's not very tame energy. And this is a time where we really should be a little more on the tame side as far as our decisions are concerned. It's not a good time to be super volatile. It's not a good time to be um, really quick to just make super, you know, um, super quick decisions. We're working through a lot of stuff. We're transforming, literally. We're transforming. Some people are in such dark energy that they're really having to take time out and be alone. Sag energy doesn't like to be alone. <laughs> Sag energy doesn't like to do that. So if you're feeling the need to make really quick decisions or to just kind of go balls to the wall with stuff, keep in mind that's going to distract you from some of the work that you have to do, okay? So just also keep that in mind. A lot of people are also in a planning process as well, and this is where people are gonna struggle this month, okay? Just in general, people are gonna be struggling with needing to do the inner work and shadow work and shadow integration that, need, that needs to be done, and also getting stuff up and running because Mars and Scorpio at the time that it was in Scorpio was really helping us to plan, really helping us to get going on some of the things we've been wanting to work on for ourselves or wanting to take steps towards achieving for ourselves. And Mars in, in Sag will also still give us that energy to do it. But it's again, it's not as focused, right? So like I said, it's like it's kind of a pro and it's kind of a con. And at the same time, we're going to have struggle choosing between putting energy into our new plans versus energy into our inner work. And there's going to be a balance that needs to happen. OK, but anyway, enough chitter chatter. Let's go ahead and do an actual uh, energy read for this. OK, I don't remember the deck I used last time, but I'm feeling the shaman deck. Put my coffee over there. All right. Come on. Come on. OK. And I am still playing catch up this week, so I have a couple more videos I have to do for YouTube. Uh, and I'm also going to be focusing on videos for Patreon as far as catch up. But you guys are going to be start seeing uh, some more new content in the next coming days, which I'm really excited about, including the video on shadow work. All right, using the shaman deck. Any messages for the Mars and Sagittarius time period? Any messages regarding this energy shift? 
Keep in mind, January 12th is going to be a big day, as is January 10th. January 10th is the full moon eclipse. I'll be doing a live video on that on the 8th of January, and I will be scheduling it soon. Once it's scheduled, I'll be putting up the live schedule I have for January, which includes uh, the new moon as well towards the end of the month. But January 12th is a big day. That's going to be a huge day, and I will be doing an energy shift reading for that. Any messages for the collective regarding this energy shift for Mars going into Sagittarius? Yeah, I'm actually hearing stay grounded. Stay really grounded during this time. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> January's bringing a lot of change. They're, yeah, they're telling me balance. Balancing being grounded is really, really important just for the reasons that I already described because integration of the shadow really needs to be done. But at the same time, there's projects a lot of you have started. There's goals a lot of you have put into place that shouldn't be ignored, but your focus shouldn't be on solely one of those things. There needs to be a balance of, oh, 555 when I looked at the phone. Uh, there needs to be a balance of focus in both of these and to not run wild with it. I just heard to not run wild with it, with your goals here. Some signs are going to struggle with that. Capricorns, you're probably going to struggle a lot with that, especially given that the new moon eclipse is in your sign. Taurus says you might struggle a little bit with that as well, is what, is what I'm hearing. Any messages for the collective regarding this energy shift? Yeah, January is going to be fun. <laughs> it's, it's really testing our ability to stay grounded, aligned, in tune, and living a balanced life. That's going to be the big challenge of January. Okay? All right. Any other messages for the collective regarding Mars going into Sagittarius? Yeah, masculine energy is going to have the toughest time in January and a little bit in February. Come spring, it's going to feel very different. There's going to be a lot more energy as well. Um, Uranus goes direct in January. I do believe on the 10th, on the day of the eclipse, January, uh, Uranus goes direct. That's also going to propel us with a lot more energy as well. Towards the end of January, things are also going to feel more mellowed out. It's the first half of January that's going to feel very funky and almost like walking a tight rope as far as staying aligned and in tune. Because of the transformation of masculine energy. Lashing out. Hold on. Lashing out. A lot of people will be lashing out. Because a lot of people won't be able to maintain this balance. Okay. Um, whenever you feel yourself. How do I say this? Becoming unhinged. They just said unhinged. They're really helping me a lot today. Um, whenever you guys feel yourself becoming unhinged. Just know that that's probably a sign that you're not very aligned or in tune. Or that you need to do some integration to get back to balance. To get back to base is actually how they're saying it to me. To get back to base. But keep in mind a lot of people won't be able to do this. So a lot of people will be lashing out at you. This is going to be a weird month where we're going to feel pulled to work with people. But we really shouldn't be spending too much time around people at this time. Again, more of that weird walking that fine line. Any other messages for the collective regarding this energy shift? Anything else we should know about the Mars going into Sag energy shift? Oh, did you guys see that? Hold on. Oh, boy. Yep, the mystical shaman healing. Healing work and also um, hearing spirit, being in tune with spirit. Again, being aligned, okay? Being aligned and making sure we're doing that integration of the shadow. Making sure we're doing that healing work. Specifically for the masculine energies at play. I just heard hawk. Hawk. Um, they're associating with, this, with the masculine. This was familiar. I feel like I've, um, I feel like we've associated the masculine with, uh, with hawk before. This still feels so familiar. Um, yeah, in 2019, I feel like this was a big theme of 2019, of the energy of the animal totem of Hawk being associated with masculine energies. That's going to come at the for, uh, forefront again. If you start seeing Hawks or that starts coming into your consciousness, um, it's, it's, just, it's just a little signal. It's just like a little red flag of, hey, pay attention to your masculine energy. Pay attention to it. They're just saying pay attention to it when that comes to play. Any other messages for the collective regarding Mars going into Sag? Any other messages pertaining to this energy shift? Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. 
gonna be very um easy to get distracted at this time wow oh my god we have one card one card a mystical shaman and you will not believe the overall energy this is so crazy remember i was saying hawk is associated with masculine energy eagle it's associated with the feminine energy <laughs> oh my god sorry i just like wow i love spirit anyway so eagle is the overall energy 16 breaking down to a seven we have a seven and an 11 here um one is 38 breaking down to an 11 is a master number seven is, is what i would consider to be a divine number actually because it's about being on your path and being guided on your path the feminine energy is screaming here uh what okay so a lot of the focus is on masculine energy right now as far as it um being transmuted right transforming but the feminine energy is coming into play now feminine energy has been been taking the lead is what i really honestly it's been taking the lead it's going to become more obvious than ever before is what they're telling me with this energy shift. And this is going to be through February 16th, which would make sense if de if um, masculine energy is going through a death process. It would make sense that feminine energy would be really at the forefront, really in the spotlight. But that's what that's literally what I'm getting with this, that feminine energy is taking the lead while masculine energy goes through their transformation. Now, like I said, this affects the collective, not just individuals. I'm not just talking about men versus women. I'm talking about masculine and feminine energies within all of us. And of course, if you want to relate it to counterparts, that will be um, very obvious in counterpart relationships as well or counterpart connections where the masculines will be in much more of a, you know, transformative process and the feminines will be in a much more taking lead, taking action sort of process as well. But yeah, I'm just getting feminine energies at the forefront. Taking control. I feel like we're going to see this on the societal stage. In the months to come is what they just said in the months to come we're going to see this on the societal stage and it's interesting too because like i said for all of, for most of 2019 the hawk has been associated with masculine energies and eagle has been associated with feminine energies specifically within the counterpart collective um but this eagle if you just look at the image it looks so masculine right it looks so masculine and i'm noticing in the back we have an eclipse there or you can also look at that as a new moon energy full moon uh eclipse is like i said on the 10th and then after that we have the new moon forget the sign that it's in what hold on what sign is it in it's gotta be aquarius i feel like it's an aquarius i could be wrong but i feel like the next new moon's in aquarius i could be wrong though. i gotta double check anyway We'll all be coming more aligned if we do all of our, the integrating that we have to do with our shadow work. But feminine energies will be taking the lead. I'm actually hearing alpha. I'm hearing alpha. This is gonna be an extra interesting few months. Yeah, in the coming months, we're gonna see this on the societal stage. Anyway, I don't wanna get dragged into that. Let's go ahead and clarify the one card that we have, the mystical shaman card. Really awesome, really awesome. And guys, like I said, don't fear this integration. And like I said, I'll be doing a video on it in the next in the coming days. Um, but don't fear it. It's it's really beneficial. It's really healthy. And it's going to make all of us feel even more powerful than we already feel capable. I just heard capable. For some of you, it's actually going to make you feel more capable and in more control of your life than you do otherwise. But it's interesting that it came across that way because we really don't have a lot of control. We really don't. Like understanding that you don't have control is the best way to feel in control. It's probably the best way to say that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and look at the Mystical Shaman deck. Deck. Card. Excuse me. Card. Uh, what deck do I want to use? I don't know what deck I want to use. Um, we'll go with Radiant Wise. So I'm at the Mystical Shaman. I feel like this came up in the last energy shift reading I did as well. about the mystical shaman yeah it's like it's so weird the way it's laying on my board it's laying on my board like this because it's the overall energy i mean it's just the epitome of, of what i've been talking about while the feminine energies are taking the lead and going into action mode being very proactive very action oriented in the physical sense like pentacles wands if we're relating it to tarot and here we have the whole healing process healing process and becoming aligned with the masculine energy is this is what the masculine energy is going to have to go through in order for all of us to integrate Anyway, let's keep going. 
And guys, also it's important to understand how the collective works as far as energy is concerned. Should do a whole video on this actually. Um, you've heard me refer to it as the energy network. I haven't referred to it in a long time that way for those who are new to my channel, but that is what it is. We're all connected through energy. Every single one of us is connected through energy. And so when one of us does some kind of intense work like that, whether we realize it or not, the whole collective feels that. So if you have these huge batches of people that we refer to as waves, of people who wake up, of people who ascend, who go through their first ascension, of people who integrate these energies in a huge batch, that elevates the vibration of the collective itself. So just something to keep in mind. Anyway, Mystical Shaman. Who are the Mystical Shaman for this energy shift? Talking about the mystical shaman for this energy shift. Talking about the mystical shaman for this energy shift. Eight of Pentacles just peeked out. We'll see if it comes out again. It like it didn't come out, but I just I saw it peek. Saw it peek through, which makes sense. That's the work, right? Being diligent. Yeah, they're bringing me back to the focus. Um, don't focus on one more than the other. That's also the key to being aligned, which is, again, why it's hard for people to be aligned. If, ever, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? If it was easy, everyone would be aligned. That's why it's not easy. That's why it's not easy. Um, it's also about just being healthy as well. Health is coming in really strong. It's a time to really take care of yourselves. Uh, why are they saying millennials? Oh, this is weird. This is weird. Why are they saying millennials? Um, that's really, really weird. Why did this just come up? Um, okay, that's a really weird specific message that just came up. That's, but that's that's literally what I just got. Um, millennials specifically to really watch your health. But they're telling me physical health is is really important at this time. Easily affected. I just heard easily affected. It's one of the hardest things to master. Okay. They're just talking to me. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what they're telling me. Physical health in this, yeah, physical health in this dimension, in this society, in this timeline is really difficult to master. And it needs paid attention to. And specifically millennials came in really strong for that. Anyway, okay. I would have thought it'd be the baby boomers, but what do I know? <laughs> But what do I know? They need to be. Okay, sorry. Now now they're like, they're talking to me like I'm talking back at them. I don't mean to be talking back at them. Um, because millennials need to be. They need to be in the best physical condition they can be. Okay. Okay. Tell me about Mystical Shaman. Okay. Sorry. It's like the messages they're giving me like are giving me such serious chills right now. Um... There's there's gonna be a lot of um, there's gonna be a lot of uh, reproducing for the millennials in the coming years. There already has been, there already has been, but that's I think that's why they're emphasizing health. Talking about mystical shaman. Ooh, world in reverse, fixed energy. So Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, also Saturn, which rolls Capricorn. Um, so world in reverse. This is an ending of a cycle that's being resisted. It's being resisted here. We have to do this healing to end these cycles. Karma needs to end. We need to end these karmic cycles. Like we need to end them now, which is why it's important to do this shadow work. It's important to do this integration. Talk about the mystical shaman. Oh, got two other cards here. Ooh, ooh. Ace of Cups in reverse and High Priestess. Piscean energy would, could also be Gemini for me as a reader. Oh boy. Um, listening to your intuition and being aligned here. Ace of Cups in reverse, I'm actually feeling ego off of this. This is part of the integration. Thank you. Part of the integration. And it's funny it's the High Priestess because I'm also noticing the black and white. The light side, the shadow side. Again, needing to be integrated. Ace of Cups in reverse is all I'm getting off of that is ego. It can explicitly mean that in this position, the ego needs to be handled. And what I mean by handled, it doesn't need to die. People, people refer to it as an ego death. I've said this before. It's not an ego death. It's an ego healing. We need our egos in this dimension. We do. We need our, our egos. It's not about letting it die. It's about getting it healthy. 
So at getting it healthy. Because the ego, I mean, I can hear some guys asking, well, why do we actually need it? Because <laughs> it actually works as an alarm system for a reason, right? It does. <coughs> Hold on a second, guys. Mm. It's just a matter of fine tuning it. You know, think of an alarm system that's broken. Like imagine an alarm system that every time you open a window, even if you're home, it's going off constantly, or you're just sitting there and it's going off. Like that's that's an overinflated ego, or that's a very wounded ego, right? It's going off all the time, always in survival mode, always like this, that, or the other. Getting that fine tuned and maintained actually helps keep the bad shit out when it needs to be kept out. You understand what I'm saying? Um, it is survival instinct is the ego. It's not just primal instinct, it's also ego. Yeah, that's what I'm getting with this to make sure. Yeah, it's all about alignment. It's all about alignment. Let's see what else wants to come through. So I wrote Mystical Shaman. Ooh, Queen of Pentacles, Capricorn energy could also be earth or water. Not surprising. We have another Capricorn card come out here. Um, Queen of Pentacles is a multitasker. It's also someone who's a nurturer. I'm actually hearing Mother Earth off of this. Oh, this is going deep. This is going deep. I'm actually hearing Mother Earth off of this. We've, we've talked about the new earth. A lot of people have talked about new earth and what that will look like. Um, new earth is not like, it's not some drastic thing where we're being taken to a whole other planet. That's not what it is. It's about living in an, an existing in higher dimensions and understanding higher dimensions and being able to access them by being aligned to be able to access them. When we wake up and we go through our ascensions and we do this work constantly, that's the other thing, guys. Like, Integrating your shadow is not a one and done process. I feel like I've said this so much in the last week. Uh, it's an ongoing thing. You go through phases of it. And every time you go through a phase of it, you have the opportunity to ascend and to access higher dimensions, okay? The reason we have ascensions is really to get the body prepared to be able to handle those higher dimensions. And not just that, but also our consciousness, to be able to understand it, interpret it, and embrace it. That's really the reason we ascend okay, or have these ascension processes. Um, it's really being able to do that. Now, Earth within itself, Gaia, um, the new Earth is basically getting the collective ready for that to exist in the new Earth in Gaia. Does that make sense? Anyway, let's keep going. What about Mystical Shaman? Ooh! Uh-oh. Got the Two of Cups out here. Soulmate energy, I'm actually just feeling more of that alignment with the masculine and feminine. Nurturing yourselves as well and being grounded. Being very being grounded right now is really going to help you stay balanced, okay, in your masculine and feminine side so that your masculine side can go through the transformations. If you have feelings coming up, if you have trauma coming up, if you're feeling depressed, any of that stuff, it means you have to address that masculine side. It means you have to address that stuff. So you can integrate it, so you can stay balanced in this energy, so you can take on whatever you need to take on as we continue to ascend, okay? Some of you are also starting businesses. Sorry, that's coming in really strong. Some of you guys are really um, focusing on your money and your abundance. Some of you are finding it distracting because you want to put all your efforts into that. You have to maintain that balance of putting focus into that as well as yourself. That's really important. That's really key to, do, to this time. Play more about Mystical Shaman. So I'm not mystical shaman. One on a card. Ooh. Hair font in reverse. Torian energy. Going against the grain. Rebelling against the patriarchy. Re rebelling against the old ways of doing things. Rebelling against, we'll just say old earth versus new earth, right? Old earth versus new earth. And I love that we have the high, the high priestess and the hair font out here. Because hair font is also known as the high priest in some decks, a high priest and a high priestess, masculine and feminine energies. What have I been saying? The feminine's been taking the lead. It's been taking the lead. We'll continue to take the lead and that's gonna be more and more obvious in the months to come. Well, the masculine energies really need to go through a transformation process in January. Parts of February are gonna be the peak of that death part before the rebirthing part to be aligned here, okay? Now, those of you who are more feminine dominant, you're going to have an easier time being balanced right now, okay? But those who are masculine dominance, not so much, okay? But either way, no matter where you like to sit in your energy, everyone has to align, okay, within themselves. Everyone's got to work on these parts of themselves to stay balanced, to keep ascending, okay? Wow, amazing. 
Where are we at? Oh my god, we're only at 24 minutes! <laughs> or 25, technically. Uh, this was way shorter than I expected it to be, but very straight to the point. Very straight to the point. Maintain that balance as best you can by focusing on yourself and focusing on the three-dimensional stuff that you have to do. Okay, especially for those who are really focusing on your money, because I feel a lot of you doing that. A lot of you are even worried about your money. If you put too much focus on that, it's just going to keep you off balance. It's going to make it harder for you to get that stuff done. Okay, the key is balance. Be grounded at this time. That's also very important. And don't ignore any shit that comes up for you. Don't ignore any trauma that comes up for you, no matter if you're male or female. Don't ignore it. It's really important that you work on it. It's really important that you go through any kind of healing process that you have to do. The mystical shaman is not just healing, guys. It's also about being in tune with spirit and ascending as well. It's also about that. It's a very divine card. And overall, like I said, we have the eagle. This is also a card of taking action, knowing what you want and going for it. Okay, like I said, a lot of you are focused on that. Then the feminine energy specifically who are taking the lead. And like I said, we're going to be start, we're going to start seeing that in the months to come on a societal level where feminine energies are taking the lead in a lot of things. Okay. As the patriarchy continues to fall. Okay. All right. So I think you guys got the gist of it. I think you guys are going to be fine. Again, this is going to be a very interesting time. If people lash out at you, understand why and understand that it's okay to be alone in this time. Um, I actually feel like being around a lot of people will be detrimental to a lot of us being in tune with our shadow side and the need to integrate it. And I will be doing a video on that in the coming months. Okay. Not coming months. Jesus. Coming days. <laughs> coming days. I promise not months. Days, days, days. I just need to play catch up. Got a couple more videos I got to do for YouTube and I want to knock out a few more for Patreon and then I'll be doing that video. I actually plan to do it by Monday. Most likely. Okay. All right, guys, I will see you later. Please enjoy this time period as best you can and make sure you stay balanced and don't get distracted. Okay. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Namaste.